Thank you for making Locked on Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. This episode is brought to you by Spotify Green Room. Download the Green Room app and find one of our Locked on Rooms. On today's show, it's all about the World Series. It ended last night. I predicted the Braves in six. Can't believe it actually happened. A bunch of us predicted it because... As you will find out later in the show, it seemed as if they were the team of destiny this year. And then we'll have other Yankee memories to talk about because we're in that time of year. Some good, some not so good. You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Stacey Gotsoulias of Locked On Yankees. Welcome to the show. It is Wednesday, November 3rd. The World Series is over. We have a new champion. The Atlanta Braves made it look easy last night, beating Houston 7-0. So we'll be talking about that for most of the episode. And I know it's a Yankees podcast, but the World Series is happening. I have thoughts about it because, you know, the Astros were the losers in the World Series and Yankee fans are probably pretty happy about that. Before we get into everything, you can listen to the show in Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, Odyssey, and every other podcasting platform available. You can watch us on YouTube and subscribe. And when you tell your smart device to play a podcast, you can say, play podcast, Locked on Yankees. So I said on yesterday's episode that The Braves pitching staff, you know, they were hanging on by a thread there. And then they came out and shut out Houston in the last game. Pretty convincingly. But I will say our insider, Gordon Beckham, thought that the day off was going to benefit the Braves more than it benefited Houston. And as we saw last night, that's exactly what happened. And I agreed with him because when you see a team break out and score a bunch of runs And then there's a day off thrown in there. And the other team is recovering from throwing the pitches that allowed all those runs to happen. It usually favors the team that gets the rest, not the team that's fired up and needs to hit again. And they have that full day of, I mean, I'm sure they practiced and everything, but yeah, it definitely benefited the Braves. And we saw that last night. Max Fried came out. What a performance, seriously, considering... Everything that's happened so far in the postseason for him, considering Michael Brantley nearly broke his ankle really early on in the game and he continued to pitch and do really well. And then the bullpen came in, shut them down. I mean, the Astros really couldn't get anything going at all. And I was just really impressed. And it seemed as if the Braves were the team of destiny. It felt like the Nationals run. Now that World Series was interesting as well because no home team won. The Nationals won game seven in Houston. And last night, the Nationals Twitter account sent out a congratulations to the Braves, which is kind of amazing when you see rivals from the same division wishing each other well. And they joked about how the visiting clubhouse in Houston is a fun place to celebrate. And that's now two World Series in the last three years that have been celebrated in Houston, but not by Houston. I have more thoughts on that later, but let's talk about last night's game. So the MVP of the World Series, Soler, they say that ball went 446. It seemed like it went 4,446 feet. (laughs) That was a bomb. And apparently someone retrieved the ball. And you know when they say a ball is tattooed, it was tattooed. That ball was injured by Solaire's bat and he knew it and everyone else knew it. And that just really felt like it felt different than the grand slam in Atlanta. I wasn't feeling it in game five. I don't know why I just felt like Houston could come back, but having that happen in Houston, that three run home run, I don't, it it just felt different to me. And it felt like, uh Oh, like, oh, I think this this might be it. I think they're really going to do this in six games. And they ended up scoring seven. You had Dansby Swanson in the thick of it, Freddie Freeman in the thick of it, Jorge Soler in the thick of it. And it was just, again, I, who the hell thought 
the Braves were going to win the World Series. I know that some people had joking predictions in the beginning of the year. Other people, you know, because some people just throw out random teams and be like, oh, yeah, the Braves are going to beat the John- uh, The Braves are going to beat the Astros in six games. Trevor Plouffe did that. Trevor Plouffe is a witch, apparently, because how on earth could you predict something like that in March? There's no way. Because it just, it didn't seem like Atlanta was going to do anything, really, until August when things turned around for them. And the Mets started falling off. And then they took the lead in the NL East. And they kept the lead in the NL East. And they made the trades that they needed to trade at the... Well, they made the trades that they needed to do at the uh, deadline. And that's what helped them win this World Series. Their pitching, unbelievable. I saw a tweet earlier. All their postseason wins. How many shutouts did Atlanta have? They had a bunch. And last night was really... I mean, they shoved last night. That's the term that people use right they shoved yeah they did and max freed especially so kudos to the braves for doing what they did and you know kudos i guess to the astros for making it this far for trying to show people that you know they're legit and they don't need to cheat although i do think it's kind of funny that the only world series that they've won so far in the three that they've appeared in is the one in the year in which they cheated. I'll have more on that in the second segment. I'm going to gloat right now. I love it. I think it's great. I think it's great that the last two World Series that they appeared in, the other team won on their field. That's just great. (laughs) I know I'm petty. I'm sorry. I can't help it. I really can't. This episode is brought to you by Green Room. Green Room is the first social audio platform made by sports fans for sports fans. The app is free to download and once you're in, you can talk with fans, athletes, and insiders in real time about your favorite team or sport, in your case, Yankees and baseball. Green Room is the perfect place to start or join conversations about Major League Baseball. You'll find fans just like you on Green Room for watch parties, debates, post-game breakdowns, and of course, reacting to big news or rumors. You can even find locked on hosts across... NBA, MLB, and NHL. I'll be joining the app soon, so be sure to get started on it. I'll meet you there. Download the free Green Room app now, currently available on all iOS devices. That means iPads along with iPhones. Be sure to create a profile, link your Twitter, and join the MLB group for the latest league updates. I know you'll find a ton of incredible rooms. Javi from Locked on Padres does them all the time. Bryce from Locked on Rangers does them all the time. I'll be sure to let you know when Locked on Yankees is live. Download the download the Green Room app today and join us. Green Room, changing the way we talk sports. Thanks again for making Locked on Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms. So, as I said, we have some insider thoughts and compliments of you know to the Braves and what they did this year and let's see oh good one of my videos didn't download perfect okay so here is Gordon Beckham explaining how the Braves were the team of destiny which I've been saying this for two weeks but we all thought it Welcome into another Locked On MLB Insider Report. I'm your host, Kainani Stevens, joined by our MLB Insider, Gordon Beckham. And we're reacting to the new World Series champions. The Braves have taken home their first championship in quite a while. Um, You kind of called it from the beginning, and this game wasn't overly close by any means. But what did you see from the Braves during this series, and how impressed were you in their efforts? Yeah, I, I think that the Braves really just continued doing what they were doing. I mean, they, they were the hottest team, you know, kind of coming in the playoffs. Their second half was amazing. We're going to talk a little bit about it. But um, they 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 kind of shocked people with taking the Brewers down in, in basically four games and then beat the Dodgers, who everybody thought would be in the World Series again. And so you just kind of saw this, this building and the first – batter of the world series it's a home run and so lair it might be the mvp i haven't uh haven't seen who ended up winning it but anyways uh you know it, just that momentum kind of kept going 
um, you know, throughout the playoffs. And you could just tell they were a team of destiny. They were a team uh, that was wanting to win. They were a tight knit group and, and everybody was pulling for each other. You could really see that. And, and the Houston also was doing the same thing, but the, the Braves just had something special. Uh, and uh, I think before the series, I actually said that they're going to win in six and, and, and it actually came true, which never happens. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it happened here. They just were a team that was, you know, it, moving in a really good direction against a team like Houston that was playing well, but, the Braves just, they came out and did it. I mean, they lost Morton in the first game, and they didn't blink an eye. Is Gordon Beckham me? Because it's the same thing. I said Braves in six, and that never really happens. I occasionally will make predictions that come true. I predicted the Marlins were going to win in 1997. I said that on the phone to my dad in April of 1997. My dad thought I was crazy. I predicted the Yankees were going to be 98, 98 and 64. Which season was that? I can't remember what season it was. And they ended up being exactly 98. It was just, yeah. And then in 2014, I wrote an article on ESPN previewing how the Yankees were going to be in 2014. And I predicted they were going to be 84 and 78. And I had people so mad at me. How dare you? The Yankees are not going to be that bad. How did they finish in 2014? 84 and 78, right on the nose. But my predictions this year weren't right. I expected the Yankees to win the AL East. I expected them to win 95 games. I mean, they won 92, so they were close, but they were nowhere near winning the AL East because, I mean, I wasn't surprised by the Rays. I was more surprised by the Red Sox. I expected them to be worse. I think everyone else did too. So it was just, it was a very odd year. And it was perfect for the the Braves to be the ones to win the World Series. Because again, who the hell thought that they, blah, 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 who the hell thought that they were going to? No one. No one except for Trevor Plouffe. Again, he's a witch. Now here's Gordon Beckham talking about Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman has been with the Braves since the beginning, 2007. Is that his first year? So it is a long time coming, and now he's a free agent. So will, will this be his last hurrah? Mentioned Freddie Freeman. There are some faces that have been around for a while. What does this win mean to them and kind of for the future of the organization? Yeah, Freddie, uh, you know, he's a legend in that in that organization. He'll probably retire his number one day. I mean, for what he's done. Um, I couldn't help but think that uh, they didn't they don't make the World Series and win the World Series this year without players like me that got him all these really good draft picks at the top of the, at the top of the draft. Uh, but um, Freddie Freeman is, is a great teammate, a great player. Um, you know, I, I think that he's got the best approach in baseball and it's not even close. Uh, what he does on a day in day out basis, he's just, he's so talented. His swing is so talented. His approach is so uh, talented and also um, disciplined that he just never wavers from that. And I couldn't be happier for a guy that I played with, but also a guy that really is a great face for baseball. I mean, this guy loves playing. He's really good at it. He's done it for a long time. And uh, I'm, I know that that he and Brian Snicker um, are, are just really, really excited to bring this championship back to Atlanta. And knowing Snit, um, this is a long time coming because nobody gave him a chance for about 50 years. And uh, he got a chance and he's just, been amazing at the helm the Braves um, a great person um, also a great manager he does he makes all the right moves um, and uh, couldn't be happier for for those two that I've actually spent some time with I was happy for Freddie Freeman they showed Charlie Freeman in the crowd and if you watch the all-star game you know that little Charlie is a very big fan of uh, Tatis Jr and he got a big hug from him, actually two hugs from him. And it's one of the cutest videos I've ever seen. So look that up if you haven't seen that. Um, but I was happy for Freddie Freeman. I was happy for Snicker because as Gordon Beckham says or said, he's been in that organization almost as long as I've been alive. So that's a really long time for someone to wait for that chance to win it as a manager. And you know, for the Braves, they last won in 95. They made it again in 96, obviously lost to the Yankees. They made it again in 99, obviously lost to the Yankees. So because the Braves have won the World Series, does this mean the Yankees are going to win the next four out of five? No. Be great, though. 
<laughs> but as I said yesterday, that's not happening again. You're definitely not going to see a three-peat champion anytime soon. You might not even ever see a repeat champion again because that's nearly impossible to do. Some teams have gotten close. Teams have made the World Series over and over again and win, lose, win, lose, you know, make it to the ALCS. Um, you know, you've seen it with the Astros. You've seen it with the Dodgers. Just it's it's hard. It's not easy to do. Um, Yankee fans were really spoiled back in the 90s. And, you know, we deserved it. OK, people my age deserve that because the 80s were rough for us. So the 90s were our reward for sitting through the 80s in the early 90s, the late 90s, because the early 90s, whoo, whenever people talk about Yankees teams being awful, I had mentioned 2014 earlier, they were 84 and 78. Yes, that's not a typical Yankee season, but they weren't 20 games under 500 like the teams from the early 90s. I know it's been a while since you've seen really bad teams because the last time the Yankees were under 500, I had just graduated high school. So it's been a really long time. I'll be attending my 30th high school reunion next year. That shows you how long it is. So that's why I always laugh at my fellow Yankee fans when they talk about 2016, 2014, 2013. And yes, those weren't typical Yankee years. They didn't make the playoffs. And, you know, they had, if you do a sporkle game of who was on the Yankees, especially in the mid 2010s, so those 2013, 2014 teams, there are guys that you're definitely not going to get. And then when you see the names on that roster, you're going to think, were they really on the team? I mean, some guys, you know, there were guys who were only there for three days, but you have some guys. I mean, I always laugh that Brendan Kelly, Lyle Overbay, Brennan Bosch, like all these, who, what? Um, Brian Roberts, he was on the Yankees, remember? Kevin Euclid, how could we forget that? Those were dark days for different reasons. It wasn't that the Yankees were horrible. They just weren't good. There's a difference. There's a big difference in that. Let's get back to the good days. I mean, 92 wins in 2021 shouldn't have been third place in the division. And it was. Thank God for those two wildcard spots, because otherwise the Yankees would have been home a day earlier. Yeah. Crazy. Baseball. You got to love it. You know what else I love? I love Thanksgiving. I love all the food. I love the treats. I love everything about it. And maybe you want a yummy dessert, but you don't want one that's full of calories and sugar. So it's the perfect time for Built Bars. Built Bar is the new holiday dessert. You can feast on something delicious and feel good about it. One slice of pie has upwards of 300 calories, and that's on the low end. Most Built Bars are only 130 calories with only four grams of sugar and plenty of protein. Replace coconut cream pie with a coconut Built Bar. I will vouch for that. Coconut Built Bars are awesome. Go for a raspberry Built Bar instead of raspberry pie. There's so many good flavors to replace any pie. They're low calorie, low carb, low fat, high protein, and they're covered in 100% chocolate. Built is a great option for when you're hungry, if Thanksgiving isn't coming soon enough, go for a Built Bar or two. Share some at your family gatherings and it'll make things less awkward. Maybe Aunt Betty hasn't tried a Built Bar yet. There'll be new surprises all month. Limited time flavors are arriving at Built.com regularly, so check the site often. And there's nothing like a Built Bar Black Friday, so mark your calendar. Black Friday will be a huge event with all sorts of surprises. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Again, that's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. BetOnline is back and better than ever with a new web interface for the start of basketball season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline remains your number one spot for all the basketball and football action this season. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus. That'll be on your first deposit. So just use our promo code locked on to receive that bonus from basketball, football, baseball postseason, which is now over, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite casino games from Vegas. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online, where the game starts. I really should have bet on the Braves in six. That was a silly mistake. 
But again, as I said earlier, I, I'm, I do have some predictions that work and then others that don't work at all. Um, but there were a bunch of us that just, they were, they, they were the team of destiny. It just felt like they were going to do it. And, um, yeah, that was, that was actually fun to watch last night as a bitter Yankee fan who doesn't like the Astros and is happy that their only world series is from the year that they cheated because, um, they were being very bratty this season and, you know, they wanted to prove to people that they could do things without cheating and then they couldn't win the world series. So, um, you know, hmm. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be this petty. I mean, I do. Because uh, I was pulling for the Astros in the ALCS, which felt really dirty. I did not like doing that. But you never root for the Red Sox when you're a Yankees fan, ever. Ever. No matter who it's against. Never. Not even the Astros. You don't even root against the Astros when they're playing the Red Sox. You can't root for the Red Sox. And I said, if the Astros make it to the World Series, I'm obviously going to pull for whichever team meets them in the World Series. At first, I wasn't sure if the Braves had a chance. But then when you saw how they beat the Brewers and you saw how they beat the Dodgers, you thought, hmm, maybe they do have a chance. And I swear, last night's game was just, wow, what a message. And Max Fried joked after the game, I had mentioned how Brantley stepped on his ankle. I don't know how he continued after that. And it seemed to, he seemed to get better as the game went on. And he said, I believe the quote was, if you step on my ankle, I'll step on your throat. <laughs> I love that sort of thing. That's great. Um, I was happy for him. I was happy for Albies. I was happy for a lot of those guys, you know, um, but especially Freddie Freeman. He was just, he's just been there for so long and no one expected it. And the way they did it was great. Beating the Astros in six games, beating the Astros at home while the Astros were, again, trying to prove that they can win without cheating and they couldn't. So, yeah, that was, it was a good, surprising World Series and a good and surprising result. Now change your name and stop doing the chop because it's racist. Please stop. Fans in Houston were booing the Atlanta fans there who were doing the chop last night, but they were booing them because you don't want the opposing team's fans to make more noise in your stadium. But you should be booing people for doing the chop. It's not. Just stop. It's 2021. Let's stop that nonsense. It's enough. Oh, Yankees memories. Well, okay. Today's not a good one. November 3rd. I think both World Series that made it to November 3rd were not good games correct let me double check this while i'm here because yeah I, I i don't think so i'm gonna double check this but i'm pretty sure that it wasn't um a fun day for the yankees i believe that was or was that the off day wait a minute no that was the off day that's right it was november 2nd that wasn't good for the yankees they lost that game in philly right the 8-6 game. Cliff Lee, A.J. Burnett. Right. Okay. Now it's coming back to me. November 3rd, 2001. Yeah, that was the 15-2 game that I talked about the other day that Andy Pettit. Whoo! Andy Pettit. Andy Pettit. Good God. Let's go over his pitching line one more time because I mentioned it the other day, but in case you missed it. Two innings. Six runs on seven hits. Two walks, one strikeout. Didn't give up any home runs. Actually, no Yankee pitchers gave up any home runs. But it was 15 runs on 22 hits. You know who did worse than Andy Pettit? <sighs> Jay Witasik. Remember that name? Mm -hmm. One and one third innings. Nine runs, eight earned on 10 hits. Whew. Randy Tr Randy Choate pitched two and two third. He did not give up any runs. Good for him. And uh, gave up four hits with one strikeout. Actually, Watasik had the most strikeouts out of everyone who pitched for the Yankees that night. He had four. And then Mike Stanton came in, pitched two innings, gave up a hit, a walk, 
and three strikeouts. That is horrific. Witasik's pitching score. That is, um, let's see, where is it? Or the game score. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Or he doesn't get a game score because he didn't start. Andy Pettit, his game score. You start with 50 points on a game score. You subtract two points for each hit, four points for each earned run, two points for each earned run allowed, um, unearned run allowed, and subtract one point for each walk. So in good games, pitchers will have like a 90-something score because you add, you know, each out recorded, each inning completed after the fourth, one point for each strikeout. So when you have a good game, your score is obviously higher. Andy Pettit's game score on that day was 17. <sighs> yeah. And as I said the other day, I was in a bar in Wilmington watching that game, and it was rough. Very rough. Oof. Yeah. But I always say this, and I believe it to be true, and I believe it about the 2017 ALCS. If the Yankees played the four games at home, they would have won. And that's very obvious in 2017 <clears throat> with the cheating. If the Yankees played four games at home in 2017, they would have won the ALCS. I will say that until I'm an old person in a nursing home. I believe it with my whole being. And I think most people who look back at that ALCS, well, I said it at the time. Houston was a completely different team in Yankee Stadium. They almost played scared in Yankee Stadium. And now that we know how Houston did so well in 2017, it's it's obvious that the Yankees would have won if they were at home. While I'm recording, I'm just going to tell you, sometimes the other people from the other shows will pop in if they're going to record and someone just popped in. That's who I was waving at. So that's pretty funny because I'm always the one that does it to someone else. Um, there's almost no way of us knowing if someone's in until we pop in. So that was pretty funny anyway. So tomorrow's show, I don't even know. I'm going to figure this out tonight because I feel like I want to start the player reviews as soon as possible, but I also kind of want to start them on a Monday and start with a fresh slate. So maybe there'll be news tomorrow because there are some things coming out. I think teams want to do things before the possible work stoppage, which will be the beginning of December. So we'll see what happens. So tune in tomorrow. But right now, that's it for this episode of Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'd like to remind you that you can listen to this show in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Stitcher, or anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. And when you get into your car, you can tell your smart device to play podcast Locked On MLB. Now you can make your second listen of the day Locked On MLB. Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the Major League both past and present. It's free and available on all platforms. One more thing, if you could be so kind, please rate the podcast and spread the word about this podcast to your fellow Yankee fans. We would really appreciate it. Enjoy your Wednesday, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.